Welcome to Coffee with the Journalist, a podcast by One Pitch, featuring well-known journalists from the top U.S.-based publications covering technology, lifestyle and culture, health, science, products and services, and more. The goal of our show is to uncover the real person behind the real stories you love to read. We discuss their beat and news coverage, what their inbox looks like, the types of pitches they receive, and lots more. Today, we're joined by John Biggs, the editor-in-chief of Gizmodo Magazine. John's tenure in journalism has spanned across 17 years, including his past roles at the New York Times, TechCrunch, and Coindesk. Not only is John a well-known journalist, but he's also an entrepreneur and author, and most recently launched his newest book, Get Funded, the startup entrepreneur's guide to seriously successful fundraising. On today's episode, John shares about his early days at Gizmodo, his thoughts on what tech news consists of, how pitching has shifted over the past 10 plus years, and more. Let's hear from John on today's episode. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Coffee with the Journalist. Today we have another, God, I'm having a role here, celebrity practically in journalism. John Biggs is here today. Celebrity, that's a uh, a strong word. (laughs) <laughs> come on in this realm out with what was the, did you say fifth book as of today fifth fifth book let me check i don't actually remember uh my goodness fifth yes called get funded the startup entrepreneur's guide to seriously successful fundraising i think every founder could use that if you're ever going to raise a dollar from vcs thank you for being on today this is so great no so it's the thank you so it's the eighth book i'm sorry oh <laughs> You lost count, my God! It's been a, it's been a, it's been a rough couple of years. So uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you have raised in excess of thirty million bucks in the past, so you're a little aware of this topic. So hence, you've written this. You previously, as we were mentioned, you were at TechCrunch. You were at CoinDesk as the editor. You were a marketing specialist as Visible Magic, which we're not going to talk too much about. But you've been around, John, and currently, for folks who don't know, you're editor in chief at Gizmodo. For folks who aren't as maybe familiar with that particular outlet, I know it's super nerdy. I personally like it. I read it every day. But what would you say is Gizmodo's brief? Uh, I mean, it's a gadget blog. It it was I, I started there in two thousand. I forget now. It's like two thousand three or two thousand four, something like that. I was one of the. I was the third editor. It's part of the Gawker Media Group, or was part of the Gawker Media Group, or whatever you want to call it anymore. So it's changed over the years. When I came back, I came back about a, gosh, two months ago. It feels like fifteen years ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I can still see the. I can still see my fingerprints on the clay, as it were, like as we started it. But it's completely. I think the the focus is different because the gadget world is no longer so variegated. You really don't have fifty phones. You really don't have fifty laptops. Yeah. And because of, I think, like hardware startups and things, it's really changed the way you can cover gadgets. So Mm -hmm. it's a whole new world right now. Mm -hmm. And I think now who doesn't have a gadget? I mean, you're not in a like neck of the woods or a certain like, oh, I'm a geek. So I have a, everyone, everyone has gadgets. If you're in America, it's like a thing. Yeah. We all have these tools. So it's, I feel like that's like technology coverage though, too, is now everyone you're, you're consumed by, you can't get away from technology. Well, all, all news is tech news now, right? So even from Trump tweeting, uh, the question is, can he tweet? Is it legal to use that medium as a as a direct communication with the voter? All the way up to out to I don't know, uh, ICE rounding up immigrants using uh, using technical tools. It's all tech now. So we're basically we're basically inundated. We're submerged. And are you in Brooklyn right now? Yeah, yeah, I'm in Brooklyn. Hanging out in Brooklyn, even in the mid COVID. Way to go! No, it's it's been it's been fun. Well, let's talk about your inbox, because that's usually the most pertinent thing people want to hear about is what does the reporters or the editor's inbox look like? Do you get a bunch of pitches on the daily? We do. Oddly enough, I would... Gizmodo doesn't get that many pitches. Uh, it's kind of funny. I'm kind of watching it right now. Yeah. Uh, I just I just deleted about a thousand emails out of my box today. Well, yeah. No, this was gathered over a week. So back at TechCrunch, I used to get like it used to be ridiculous. I used to have like five thousand, six thousand emails a day. And I maybe it's the maybe it's because there aren't that many daily announcements. Did you say five thousand? Five thousand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was nuts. What? In your inbox every day. Yeah, and I would have to go through, and I would, and I would delete. Oh wow! I, that's the biggest number I've ever heard. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, it's, it's, it's a wider, it was a wider, uh, swath of the internet, right? So we were talking about web, dev- web apps, uh, startups, all this other stuff. So I don't know anybody from like HelloFresh to some kind of new, new developer system can, would, would try to pitch us. So I was dealing with that. So that was almost a, that was a daily, that was a daily slog. So me, me deleting a thousand emails today because I was out for about a week is like, yeah, it's like vacation. Wow. Well, you were the editor in chief or the editor at large at TechCrunch for four, three years. Well, yeah, yeah. So I was, I was there for fifteen years. Oh, you were. Oh, oh, excuse me. Two thousand and five. I misread that. Two thousand five to eighteen. Yeah. Holy cow! That's why I told you you're a celebrity. Hey, <laughs> I totally misread that because I think subconsciously I thought, well, who's who's at an outlet for thirteen years? Wow. This is this. I'm I'm so excited you're on, John. You're going to sprinkle us with your your knowledge of the industry and such, but. Let's go back to the inbox. So now, Gizmodo, it's different. I think there's a big difference between reporter versus editor because sometimes you're playing like signal guard and you're like pitching things over to someone on your team who might report it. So do you still, like you yourself, do do people write pitches to you? Like, John, I know you're the editor, but like I really want you to review this new watch. Well, so I mean, I think people have, that, that was that was one of the things it, that, that actually got kind of depressing because I really didn't have any friends. I just had people who pitched me. So yeah, I mean, it's it's literally a, it's literally my my entire relationship with humanity was basically what does this person want from me? Which is God. Yeah, I guess I don't know. I mean, that's not that's not healthy. So that's that's kind of gone away, uh, which also is kind of depressing as well because it's like oh well now I don't know. <laughs> I, the, the the friends I didn't want I don't have and now I don't have the uh, even though those friends quote unquote. <laughs> well, you're busy writing books, so hopefully that's another outlet for you. Yeah, so I'm tr- I'm trying to trying to stay busy. So the so the the thing there is that you're in a you're in a position of I guess power. Blogs for the most part have kind of lost their juice over the past few over the past decade. Let's say like back back when we started when, when TechCrunch when first started that was like a that was ten thousand easy signups in a minute. As soon as you got posted on TechCrunch, and then um, and now it's I don't know a couple hundred because just people are so inundated with stuff, and it's and it's 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 an entirely different different world. I mean, there there used to be a situation where VCs would basically say, if you aren't mentioned in TechCrunch, we won't invest in you. So that was kind of that was a lot of power to to wield. That's a lot. The flip side of that is that you basically were just pitched constantly, just hassled constantly about about what you want to do. Wow. I mean, to TechCrunch's name, and you were one of the founders, we still, we have clients, now this is on the BAM side of things, but who are like, oh, absolutely, my top, ch- that's, I have to get my article, I need to get the piece of news in TechCrunch. That's my top focus. That's it. I mean, it still carries a lot of weight in the tech world. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, and it, that's, that's fine. It's kind of silly that, it's kind of silly that they give it that much power. But God bless them for for wanting it, and again, and it's main it's maintained its power. I think I think what TechCrunch has done well is they've really done uh, events well. So they've really done yes. A disrupt uh, defines the startup event, and it's one of the best. So, and people love it or have have loved it in the past. When they're going to do a digital version of it, we'll see how that goes. Making of a story. So John, we like to just ask folks whether you get an article idea from a pitch or you're walking your dog or you're scanning TikTok, whatever you're doing, where do you come up with the nugget of a story? I think it, I think it's varied and vast. Uh, one thing that I did was, uh, was set up a thing called uh, tech for reporters, uh, tech for reporters.com. And it's basically just kind of like my reverse spam system. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of reporters just don't try it, I guess. I don't know what's going on. But um, but it's an interesting it's an interesting system because you can basically ask a question, and you can say, "Hey, what do you think about I don't know VPNs?" and I'll and I can get uh, immediate answers. And that's that's one. It's kind of like help a reporter out, but just for tech ideas. Gotcha. Yeah, that's what I built out for that. I don't really get pitches. I don't get stories from pitches anymore. It's just because I just. Unless it's like some kind of new gadget, right? Unless it's just something small. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I'm if I'm writing something, I want to write I want to write something with uh, with some with some uh, teeth. So I'm trying to figure out who I can talk to. Mm. So, but and where are you getting that though? Are you scanning Twitter? Are you talking to various folks? I'll work with my editors here, just trying to figure out what they're what they're as top of mind for them. 
we do a lot of science and uh, ecology stories. That's something that I've never really focused on, but it's something that the site focuses on. And if I see something on Twitter or whatever that passes through the transom of my mind, then I'll give it to them. How did you get this, for example, Tom Cruise thing where he's wearing this horrendous mask? Oh gosh, I found it. Yeah, and I showed it to I showed it to our uh, IO9 editor. Uh-huh. And it was kind of and she basically pointed out that everything about it was wrong cuz he was wearing the awful mask. Yeah. He's somehow the these like some kind of like teenage girls identified him in a vi- in a van without even <laughs> seeing his face, which is kind of <laughs> cheesy, like you can kind of tell you can kind of tell that he was maybe making making it up. Yeah. Yeah, it's very awkward. Interesting. Okay, so you so you happened to just like come across this? Uh yeah. And you were like, "Oh, okay, and chat with okay. Oh, interesting. Wow." And he even put his own screenshot of himself on his own Twitter page. Okay, interesting. Huh. Wow. The internet, it's it's vast and wide itself. That's the scary part. Today's interview will continue after this brief message brought to you by One Pitch. Are you curious to learn more about the unique ways One Pitch helps connect journalists with brands and sources? Head to onepitch.co for more information about how we're helping each side save time and connect more effectively. Sign up for your free account today. Now, back to today's episode. Well, one thing we like to do, John, is a word association game. So I'm going to just tee up a word and you give me the first word you think of, if that sounds good. Mm -hmm. Here we go. All right. Okay. Food. Oh, gosh. Hungry, I guess, because I haven't had lunch. Yeah, hungry. Oh, and it's late over there in Brooklyn. Drink. Uh, I got to slow down during COVID. Yeah, hey. Hobby. Hobby? Uh, watches. Mm. Gadget. Uh, everything. AI. Kind of the future, not really. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Brooklyn. Uh, home. Startups. Uh, too many. Cryptocurrency. Uh, garbage. Time. Not enough. Pitch. Uh, too many. Inbox. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> Recently. By the way, so you mentioned earlier, you do the you just deleted a thousand there just off the cuff. So are you one of the absolute zero unread people and delete everything, or do you do a sophisticated filing system? No, no, no. I'll go like so. I so I've gotten to the point where I can just go through all this crap and just uh, and just delete it. It's uh. Yeah, it's not it's not impossible by any stretch of imagination. So I'll just uh, I'll just delete it, really. And it's gone. There you go. And do you get to zero? Is that a like reoccurring theme for you, or you kind of lax about that? I definitely want uh, I definitely want to cut it uh, to zero. I'm trying to yeah. I seem looking at it now. I only got one one unread. One. Yeah. Wow. And then I got another two in Gizmodo. So I mean, I have multiple email addresses as well. Dang, you got that. Wow, hats off to you. And this is after we're coming back from Labor Day, when I would imagine people are like, okay, it's officially not summer. Let's go. Good for you. Okay, I'm envious of that. And by the way, since I am, do you have like a cadence in which you go through and, and batch them out? Or is it, is there a structure to that? I don't think I don't think there's I don't think there's a structure. I'll just like if I see it, I'll I'll go through it. And if I so the the benefit is if I get it if I get it down to one or two, I can I can do it a lot faster than uh, than if I have I have it left built up. So I really don't let it sit for like I don't know an hour or two. It just doesn't make any sense for me. Mm, got you. Okay. What are you reading right now, John? Besides your own written material. I just read a. I just read the Institute by Stephen King. I don't know why I read that. Oh, was it good? It was all right. I mean, like I haven't read Stephen King since I was like a kid. I was gonna say that's an old school throwback. So I said to myself, "Let me see what he's been doing." Yeah. And I really enjoyed it. I also read a book called Pachinko. I I was just on vacation last week, so I did a lot of uh, like physical books. I dr- carried a lot of physical books with me. And there was a book about. Uh, it was basically the history of. Um, a South Korean family uh, that was just that's it's really really rich, uh, really really. I mean, it was really dense, um, and I enjoyed it. And it's and oddly enough, I was able to read like these these massive books that I that I remember taking ages to read. You're just flying by. Yeah, in two days, so it was kind of fun. Were you in a like relaxing? We went up to Maine to uh, to the. Dear Isle. So I wasn't really, I wasn't really distracted. I mean, I have three kids, so I was obviously distracted. But I also think because of the Kindle, because of just not even expecting, not even thinking about density of books anymore, 
yeah, I would sit there and just fly through it. And then now that now that now that I'm past that like stage, I can just like pick up a I can pick up that Stephen King novel and read it in two in a day and a half. Wow. By the way, on Audible, it's over 18 hours, 59 minutes. So it's a thick one. Wow. Yeah. It's really odd. I don't know. Maybe I'm not, I'm not even saying that I got like something special. I just think it might be something because of the Kindle. Yeah. You don't see the pages. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe. Changes your mind a little bit, perhaps. Ah. And then what are you reading? Let's say on the daily, do you read some newsletters? Do you look at certain websites? Not really. I have a, uh, I have a list of, uh, I have a list of favorites that I go to every day just to like look through like Boing Boing and Engadget and TechCrunch, but that's about it. Okay. So you, you don't have a, a lengthy repertoire of the 12, 13 things you got to go through. Some people do. And I'm like, God. Oh, well, no. I mean, I like, yeah, no, this is, this is a big list. So it's, if I look at it now, it's probably about 30 sites that I just hit, but I, I don't, I don't read every single, I don't read every single thing, but yeah. But it's up. It's pulled up, ready to go. Yep. Mm-hmm. Back to the pitches, and I know that's now been cut to the the bone pretty much for you. But for those folks who are still pitching, was there ever a pitch where you're like, "Wow!" Like, was there ever in a time when you were at TechCrunch, and maybe in particular, where you're like, "That's a damn good pitch," or like a style of a pitch that had you open and go, "Like, you know what? Hats off." Well, I mean, like, I can't, I, I don't want to encourage people to do goofy stuff. Like there are a lot of, there were a lot of pitches like that were kind of like crass or, or, or somebody once sent me a, uh, like a jerry can, like a gasoline can full of coffee beans. What? And it's just, it's cause it's cause their product would just like, would super, super boost some kind of website or something like that. And I thought it was, and that was just kind of goofy, like really wasteful. And then there's also like, there was like a guy, there was one startup. I remember like literally like it was like, he was just cursing people out in the subject line and like, Hey, <gasps> like, Hey jerk, why don't you take a look at this stuff? We know that you're not paying attention. Do you think we think or we think you're an asshole or something like that? And it's like, come on. It's like, it's really ridiculous. I don't know if you guys are explicit or not. Um, wow. Oof. But that was really frustrating. And it's not, it's not. And every time I talk to people, I tell startups how to do this thing. They're, they're kind of like, Oh, we don't believe you. Uh, but I, but I tell them that's an absolute truth. The best pitches are basically a CEO saying, Hey, I have something cool. Yeah. Would you like to take a look, take a look at it? I mean, some of my favorite pitches are just like people that I kind of recognize. Maybe, maybe I do, maybe I don't who say like, Hey, this is an interesting thing. Would you like to take a look? And as soon as I see that, then I can like say, yeah, sure. What is it? And, uh, yeah. Or even if it's just like, um, I don't know if I just respond with just my address, if they want to send me a, uh, sample or whatever, just real nice and quick. Wow, I'm surprised by people thinking that there's an effective way of using cursing in your headline or in your subject line to be get a res- what like what? Yeah, but but also remember you have to remember the mentality of a of a of a entrepreneur. The entrepreneur is is under immense pressure. Uh, if they've raised, for example, four million dollars and they can't get any attraction, and this is a this is happens almost every day. Yeah. If they can't get any traction if they can't get anybody to pay attention to them. They're basically it's it's a personal failure. Yeah. And it's and it's to the to the extent that you feel like you feel like it's your well, I mean it is your fault, but whatever. Mhm. Mhm. You feel exhausted to a degree. Mhm. What are your thoughts on the future of journalism, particularly as you've been in it for a while, John? Oh gosh. I don't know. It's uh I'm not overly excited for its future. I think we're in a I think we're in a world where nobody really appreciates it. Uh, nobody appreciates the work people do, and it's really frustrating to me to see that. And also, we started giving our stuff away, so we basically just wasted an entire uh, I mean, the brains of an entire generation of journalists. Mm. Uh, I'm a uh, what you call it? I'm a Gen Xer, mm-hmm. and we basically built out this whole idea that. You just have to produce constantly. So there's all the all the, the cohort that I came up with are now doing garbage for all intents and purposes. Mm. They're doing they're doing Best Buy kind of stuff and like just like fancy like just like roundups and everything, and it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Oh. So if you had to rewind the clock, would you still do it? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I have I have no problem with uh, with doing doing journalism, quote unquote. Uh, I think the thing that I have have issues with is that we're in a we're in a world where nobody appreciates that they that they are doing that journalism and nobody and everybody thinks it's fake news when it's basically we're giving you stuff for free yes all day long yes 
you're taking it and you're really enjoying it, but you're still complaining about it. So hmm. yeah, it's a problem. When do you go to, well, not now amid COVID, but do you go to journalism schools and it all talk about this? Uh, yeah, I used to, I guess, uh, over the over the past couple of years, it's been been less and less. I guess I don't know what the, I don't know what happened there. Uh, hmm. But yeah, it's like I'll try to help as much as I can if I hear something. If I hear from somebody to, uh, that they need help or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. I'm happy to uh, I'm happy to offer a hand. Yeah. What's interesting on what you said is, and this is a consistent answer, is if the outlook is still negative the person usually says, well, has, it's been a hundred percent so far that they'd still do it. They'd still re- rewind the clock and say, oh yeah, no, I'd still do it. I would have, this is my calling or this is what I love, or this is what I have to do or whatever it is. So there's always this interesting duality between those. I would, I would never, I would never change. I mean, like I, I try to change, for example, I tried to become a entrepreneur, startup guy. Uh, I did that for a number of years and what came out of it is they basically built two businesses that are specifically designed for to, to scratch the itches that I had as an entrepreneur. And one of them was specifically about, uh, about content. Mm-hmm. And then now here you are back at Gizmodo. Yep. <laughs> so you got back, sucked back in. Well, John, let's play this last part of our podcast for today, which is our, our Mad Libs section. Are you familiar with that? Uh, yeah, I know. I know all about Mad Libs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, we're going to play one and then we'll read it back. See what, see what happens here. So first thing is a catchphrase, any catchphrase. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Okay. A journalist scare phrase or word that you never want to hear as a journalist. Uh, deadline. Yes. What about a buzzword used in journalism? That's like positive. Blockchain. How about an adjective? Adjective happy. Happy. And then part of a pitch. The um, th- throat clearing. Okay. Another adjective. Green. And then another part of a pitch. The conclusion. Great. Amount of time. Year. Year. Another adjective. Uh, loud. All right. A singular noun. Corn. Corn. I haven't heard that one. A topic. Cell phones. Cell phones. And then almost done here. A verb ending in ing. Uh, running. And then how about just a verb? Move. Okay. Here we go, John. From the top. To me, journalism is, I'm loving it. It consists of deadlines and blockchain on the daily. If a pitch has a happy clearing of your throat, I will absolutely respond to it. However, if a pitch has a green conclusion, you can expect no reply from me. If a year goes by and you don't see an email back from me, you can just assume I am not loud about it. The best stories always have corn and are usually about cell phones. And the best way to reach me is by running it over to me, but you can also move it over to me. <laughs> there you go, John. Yeah, we did it. Put that in your next book. I'll put it up at the uh, up up front so people can can read it in the in the little jacket in the little little uh, margin jacket thing. Here's my Mad Libs on all things journalism. Perfect. Oh, John, thank you for being on for today. Such a legend. I know you're being discreet, but give yourself some kudos here. Eighth book out. Everyone needs to get it. By the way, you can follow John on Twitter at John Biggs, two Gs. You already have almost 40,000 followers. So again, celebrity status here. And your website, your personal website's on there too. So people can click over and see all your books. Get all of it on the Kindle. Perfect. Thanks, John. Appreciate you. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Coffee with the Journalist featuring John Biggs from Gizmodo Magazine. If you like our show, make sure to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and anywhere else you listen to podcasts. If you have a moment, leave us a review to share your thoughts about the show, as well as today's episode. To learn more about the latest tools on OnePitch, head to our website at onepitch.co and see the unique ways we're helping public relations professionals pitch journalists more effectively. We'll be back next week with an all-new guest and even more insights about the journalist you want to learn more about. Until then, start great stories.